Hello my friends. I'm out here just mixing up some soil. <clears throat> I need to fill some containers and plant some uh, shrubs. But uh, since I use biochar, and someone asked a really good question of what is the ratio, how much biochar do you use uh, for how much soil, I'm making some soil mix. So I thought it would be a good time to, to address that question. And when I started uh, with biochar, I had the same question. So, like a lot of people, I was on YouTube and the internet, searching and watching videos. And the best I could find was uh, people kept repeating 5 to 10%. So you want uh, your total soil mix, you want anywhere from 5 to 10% of uh, biochar, that's what they're saying. And then uh, some are warning that, you know, if you go over that, it causes a harmful effect or whatever. If it's not charged and you put a whole bunch in your dirt, it's going to suck up the nutrients. If you charge it first, it's going to have no negative effect. If you Actually, if you watch my last video, I got a bunch of uh, weeds growing quite happily and healthily in just a pile of biochar. No compost, no, no nothing special. Don't, don't water it or anything especially. So, <clears throat> you know, over the years of using it, I have my own way of mixing it. So uh, I'll go by the prescribed amounts to show you, first of all, and then I'll show you uh, what I look for. So for all of you looking for a measurement, the best I can do, the best I can find that was anywhere near a consensus, like again, uh, people keep repeating 5 or 10%. But this is really light, soil's heavy, 5 or 10%, what's that look like, right? I didn't know, it confused me when I started. I've seen uh, agricultural papers suggesting you could use up to 10 metric tons per acre. So on a large scale. But if you're just filling uh, some containers or a raised bed, or you're amending uh, <clears throat> your existing garden soil, in ground beds, whatever you're doing, whatever you want to use it for. The smaller ratio that I could find that makes any sense to me was one quart, which I have right here, right? So one quart of volume, not a weight of the biochar. Biochar is going to have a wide variety of weights depending on how you charge it, how wet it is when you weigh it, etc. Right? So, <clears throat> Instead of you know saying oh this is so many grams or so many ounces, quart, which is approximately a liter, so a liter or a quart of volume of biochar for one square foot of soil. Now I couldn't find whether that was soil amended already with compost, just straight soil. So what I'll be doing today is mixing at first one quart of biochar with a square foot of my topsoil that has been sifted and no compost added. So I'll take you over and show you that. Here's my pile of uh, topsoil I'll be using. I run it through a quarter inch hardware cloth uh, framed sifting thing I made. It's just some uh, pieces of wood screwed together on each side and I laid across a wheelbarrow and in this case I sifted you can see there one cubic foot of my topsoil and I have my one quart jar of biochar so I'm going to tip this box out and let's see what this one quart of biochar looks like mixed in and I'll show you how I make my soil mix all right, I just poured this out and mix in some biochar. I spilt a little bit into it already. So, looks like a Oh, 
probably a third of the wheelbarrow. It's probably a three cubic foot wheelbarrow then. So uh, that's quite a bit of just soil. Here is uh, the one quart biochar. This is why I don't want to simply answer in the comment section uh, what the ratio is or you know rather you see it with your own eyes and I've never stopped to you know weigh it or control it with the ratio as such now I only mix my soil mixes once so I'll mix some biochar and some compost into some soil and I'll add it to a raised bed or I'll plant a tree or a shrub or whatever I'm using it for. It's intended as a one-time mix. The only amendments I use is a mulch on top. But uh, that being said, I also use Hugo culture. So my soil mix is layered between uh, decomposing wood of the Hugo culture beneath and uh, a mulch layer on top. So it's always got organic matter passing through it with the uh, organisms as they travel through. But again, it's intended as a one-time soil mix. Your soil will be uh, loose and well draining. Okay, well, maybe first here. I'll... Okay, this is what the soil looks like. All right, it's very uh, dusty. Very nasty. So what I do is just mix it in, turn it in just like uh, you would your baking something. Okay. So that was one quart for a cubic foot. Now, maybe that's a conservative estimate. Uh, so that people don't have poor results if the biochar, you know, is poor quality or hasn't been charged. There's a lot of variables to control in biochar. You have to make sure you have high quality charcoal. You have to make sure you charge it properly. And you have to make sure you incorporate into the soil properly also. So for what I do and what I like, the one quart to one cubic foot simply does not cut it. So I'm going to add some more. This is something uh, important to watch because as you add the biochar, the character, the physical characteristics of the soil will change. You don't get that dust blowing off everywhere anymore. Okay, so this is quart number two. more or less full. Again, I'm just going to turn it into the soil. What I want to see is the texture start to change. It will, of course, get a little darker. Biochar is black. This is really dry too. So you see it's still real dusty. So that was two quarts. Okay, the third quart. Like if I was going by five or ten percent. I really wouldn't know how to judge that. I've been using this for a lot of years and in the beginning I tried you know to make the best estimate as I could according to what I heard being said, right? And the first soils that I used biochar in I didn't use very much. And they didn't really stay as loose or as well draining 
uh, as I would like. So since then, over the years, I've been incorporating more and more into it. I think the only danger in using too much is, again, as I said, uh, poor quality and not charged sufficiently. Because it is like a nutrient sponge. It will take and hold all kinds of minerals and organic compounds. So if it's not charged, it will rob the soil. And it may be years till it's fully charged, depending on how much you put in. So you're perfectly safe. I've been using it for years. Uh, what would be excessive amount? So this is uh, four quarts. It's four times the recommended, as best I could find, as far as any sort of consensus or accepted recommendation. All right, and that's why I'm showing you this too, so you can see it. All right. I could just simply go Google something and repeat it. But that's not what I do when I'm using the biochar. Okay, I can start to... starting to suspect that one quart per cubic foot is also maybe if you have compost incorporated uh, this pile sat you know a lot of the organic matters uh, been eaten up or decomposed away I mean it still has organic matter in it probably a good percentage too things will grow in it just not as well as if it had biochar incorporated All right, court number five. So five liters of biochar by volume, five quarts, one cubic of soil. Still really not like I wanna, I wanna see. I could wet it down, it'd look all great for y'all, but I intend on using it. I'm planting some Hascap bushes with this and using whatever's left over for containers. And those Hascap bushes will outlive me. So I want to make sure that the soil mix they're in uh, is sufficient. So normally I would just uh, use a shovel Shovel this all in. All right, so court number six. Now this is also going to depend on your soil type also, right? Like uh, I got, as you can see, this real dry, this is silt mostly, so you know, I actually have a pile of clay I want to do tests on to see how much biochar it takes to make. Uh, make that useful. And I'll get a bag of sand and see how much it takes to make that useful. But now I put six quarts in here. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but it's starting to be a little less dusty. And I drop it. Okay, got some chemistry, chemical bonds going on there. All that dust when it blows away from your topsoil, that's all the minerals and everything. So, what was that, six? Well, might take as many as ten. Most of the video is going to be me scooping 
off camera. So this is number seven. This charcoal has also been run through the quarter inch hardware cloth that I run the soil through. You can also run your compost when adding it through that too. And it's a good for, you can start uh, plants straight from seed in it, nothing will obstruct them. But uh, I generally just sort of compost in raw. So that was seven, this is eight. I just had a feeling that seven was not going to be the magic number. Eight's a lucky number, let's see what happens. Okay, so now we're up to eight, eight quarts, and I'm starting to see a change in the texture as my hands run through it. It's just like uh, you're folding sugar and flour together for a cake or something. You want it well incorporated. And, and remember, I, you only have to do this once. Like in a lifetime, I mean once. Uh, traditional forms of gardening, uh, every spring you're shoveling in and mixing composts, manures, amendments, right? And then often that's not enough, you have to fertilize. And by the fall, that's broken down, all that organic material, and your soil's reverted to its original state. You incorporate this in there well, and uh, you'll be permanent like that. And by permanent, I mean uh, has the potential to last effectively making the soil more fertile for, for thousands of years. There's evidence of that in South America. Okay, number nine. It's actually a little surprising to me. So again, I don't measure things when I'm doing this. Like perhaps by the shovel full. I usually shovel six or eight shovel fulls of dirt, add some biochar. But I go by the physical texture of it. And when you grab a handful, you want to be able to see charcoal in it. And I've noticed from my particular soil, once the dust really disappears, uh, I've had enough charcoal added. And I've been growing in these soils, so I'm not showing you something I googled. Well, I showed you what I googled was one quart per cubic foot. We're at nine. All right, number 10. I think we're getting close. I hope so because uh, I'm going to run out of prepared biochar. So I have 10 quarts in here. And I'm just about satisfied by the looks of it. It's much less dusty, although there's still pockets in there. There it is. I just like using my hands, you get a good thorough. But dirt is heavy. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's kind of a banding now. There's like two different shades to it. Light gray and a darker gray. Oh, 
find those pockets of the lighter gray, mix it up. Normally, like I said, you're doing this all with a shovel, not measuring enough. A little tiny pint jar, and I'd be doing it quickly. Doing a lot of dirt, moving the dirt. Sifting it through the sifter helps a lot. Breaks down all the big clumps. Gives you a nice final product. All right, you keep it watered, keep it mulched. This will stay loose and well draining. You can grow anything you want in it. Okay, we have 10 in there. And it's probably gonna take a dozen of them at least. See, I wouldn't recommend a ratio or any set amount in this 5 to 10 percent nonsense or whatever that is. I mean, it's safe advice, right? Someone makes some uh, poor quality charcoal and then puts a large amount in the garden and everything doesn't grow very well. They're going to blame it on the biochar. Or if we ever told them to use it, right? Okay. So I went ahead and uh, sifted out what I thought I would use, what I would typically use for uh, half a wheelbarrow full of dirt. And uh, this is what I got. So just under, you know, just shy of 12 quarts. So we'll call it 12 quarts. So it's gone from really light gray to a little darker consistency. The cons sorry, the consistency is uh, different. A lot less dust coming off of it. The heat is making me talk funny, I apologize. <laughs> I don't make sense, it's the heat. <laughs> Blame it on global warming. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much mixed the way I would mix it. What I'm looking for, right? The, the physical characteristics has changed. Here, let me grab some, what I started with. Okay, so you can see it's a different color. You know, you say, okay, that's just from the black carbon. Yep. And I pick up this. Well, if I'm getting that in the camera. It's a little bit of dust, not much. Small particles. Look how much dustier this is. Eh? Not that. All right. Not kicking back up a big pile of dust. Okay, 
It's not the same soil anymore. All they did was add biochar. Like I said, all that dust blowing off there in the wind, that's all your minerals. All right, so the simplest thing to look for, of course, is a change in color. There's a change in texture, which you can't see on the camera as well as I can feel with my hands. Right, the physical nature of it, right? It's not all blowing away in the wind now. Right, if I drop some on it, there's not, it's not coming up in a big puff of dust anymore. Okay, some chemical bonding going on. The cation exchange capacity of biochar is incredible. Clay is pretty good. That's what makes clay soils, clay loams good to grow in. But biochar, it's off the scales in comparison. Okay, so you should be able to grab any handful of it and see some biochar when you pick it up. All right, just grab a random handful. You don't see uh, chunks of it. It's hard to see here because everything's dry and it's not so bright black. So yeah, 12 quarts minimum. I'd say if I had uh, biochar to spare, I could add some more. So the 5, 10%, you can try it if you like. Said I, I didn't have my first experience with biochar go that wells. I'm pretty sure now it's because I didn't use enough. But, but if it's uh, well made, high quality charcoal, well charged, then uh, should be no problem. And there you go. This is the soil mix I use for everything. Into this you can add whatever compost you have. Your cold leaf and grass mulch compost, <clears throat> your hot kitchen compost, uh, manures, aged of course, composted manures. You know, you could even add uh, composted wood chips into this and mix it up. It would do no harm if, as long as it's composted first. But yeah, there you go. There's a ratio that I would use in my garden. Minimal ratio of 12 quarts of volume of biochar to one cubic foot of soil which has not been amended with compost. And the reason for that is compost disappears quickly. It's organic, breaks down really fast. Charcoal's organic too. Lasts forever. Or relatively so. Hundreds, thousands of years. Not forever. In this state it will stay in the soil creating fertility for hundreds if not thousands of years. But I'll bring it back and I'll show you my final addition to the soil mix. Alright, so this is videos about ratios and measurements. What I typically use for half a wheelbarrow of soil when making a mix. It's a five gallon pail of my leaf and grass compost. This is at various stages of breaking down. These are discolored white with uh, mycelium. This is a fungal dominated cold compost. Uh, you can use, like I said, your kitchen compost, your hot compost, you know, your animal manures. Whatever you have is the idea, right? Use the resources at hand. This is just from uh, the lawnmower and I make a pile with it and it compost down. I use it in all my soil mixes. I just break it up a bit with my hands. If I'm doing spring plantings, I want to plant seeds into my soil mix. I'll run the compost through my quarter inch hardware cloth contraption I have here which sits across the top. Put it on here, rub the compost through, helps if it's damp or moist. Uh, we haven't had rain for a couple weeks, everything down here is uh, pretty dry. Yeah, I just kind of scooped it a little bit from the side of the pile and the bottom of the pile. 
This is just going to add some organic matter in here. It's going to attract uh, large organisms, worms and such. And continue to charge the biochar. So if you're not sure if your biochar is uh, charged sufficiently, or you're using biochar for the first time, just go nuts. You can, you, you can put as much compost into your garden, if it's already composted, as you're you know, you can tolerate physically shoveling it in there and mixing it, right? Like, that's a real question, right? Like, this is why I found biochar and started using biochar, is because I don't want to be doing that every single spring just to see my soil look worse in the fall. And always be questioning, you know, why aren't my plants doing better? Why doesn't my corn produce, you know? There's no strawberries, etc. This year, I got I got huge strawberries on a on a kind of plant that was uh, described as small to medium sized berries. I'm not saying it's the biochar, but I mean maybe it was mislabeled. So yeah, just mix in some compost. So again, you can see this is a fairly good ratio. This is what I consider a rough mix. A fine mix would be running the compost also through the uh, also through my sifter I made, the quarter inch hardware cloth. But this is going in the ground. Some hascap berry bushes going on top. By the looks of it, I'm gonna have to water it a lot. It is dry. But as you can see, right, I'm shoving it all around. When I started, if I'd done that, there'd be a big cloud of dust here. That biochar, like, I don't know. Some people are really hesitant about it. It's one of those things, right? You don't realize you're living without something so important that once you start using it or once you have it, uh, you find you couldn't uh, do what you're doing without it. I could definitely not be successful gardening where I'm gardening in these conditions without spending a lot of money on bringing in soils and amendments and I would have to use fertilizers and insecticides. Your plants will grow healthier, they'll be more uh, disease and insect resistant. I swear by it. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now, if I had seedlings I had to repot, I would use this. If I'm filling a container for potatoes or tomatoes or peppers or basil or marigolds, I'd use this. If I was uh, planting in some flowers, I'd use this. I planted an apple tree a couple weeks ago. I used this exact soil mix, same ratio thereabouts, right? I never measured it, but like I said, I prepared enough biochar to what I thought would that I would use, right? Just from experience and how many shovels go with how many shovels. But instead of giving you how many of my shovels, right? Like I said, everybody's dirt is different. What you're gonna have to do is take your biochar with your raw topsoil, whatever you're mixing it with, and mix it in thoroughly and just observe. Observe the changes and make sure you see it in every handful. And I can't really show you with this because it's too dry, but once it's moist or wet or whatever, right, squeeze it. Squeeze it into a ball. If it falls back apart, you're good to go. If it stays in a clump, if it's clay or this silt stuff I have, uh, you know, maybe add some more. There you go, one cubic foot of topsoil, 12 quarts of biochar by volume, or 12 quarts by volume of biochar, and one five gallon pail of uh, loosely packed compost, your choice. And you have yourself a soil mix. Now, uh, 
even if I'm doing in-ground gardening, I'll dig up the soil and mix it and then put it back. Because doing this, you only have to do it once. So whatever extra effort is in making a soil mix like this, it's a one-time effort, okay? I, I don't have to shovel manures or composts or anything into this after this. All I do is put a layer of the, of the mulch, the same as what I make compost out of, right? Empty the lawnmower onto the garden bed. I do, I do a very thick layer in the fall, and I try to keep it on the uh, exposed areas during the summer. You know, conserves water and it feeds the soil. The organisms come up from the bottom, bring stuff down all through it, right? And then you have the biochar in there. You don't have to worry about uh, your organic matter or anything. It's permanent. I mean, what is carbon if it's not organic, right? Good job. Soil mix, biochar. What's the ratios? One cubic foot of soil. 12 quarts by volume of biochar and uh, 5 gallon pail of compost. Alright my friends, that was how I make my soil mix. I hope that was a good uh, visual representation of the ratios of uh, soil to biochar and even compost. Uh, give you an idea of, uh, well I'll give you an idea of exactly how I do it but a uh, good rough starting point for your own mixes. Your soil is going to be different to mine, so you're going to have to be observant and uh, use your own judgment. But uh, I measured out a typical soil mix that I make, and that's what we got. 12 quarts of volume of biochar to one cubic foot of soil, and I used a five gallon bucket of compost uh, after the soil and biochar are mixed. So if you found any of this at all helpful, please subscribe. I'd love to make new friends. You know, give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. And uh, wherever you are, whenever you watch this, hope you're having a great day. Peace.